Welcome to this webinar. My name is Christopher Seidel and I will explain how the event recorder helps you to identify timing issues and lets you analyze the power consumption of your application. With the event recorder you can get high-level information about the execution of your application software. The required event annotations are easy to use and add only little software overhead. It works even with production code using the highest compiler optimization levels and includes event, data and time information. The MDK middleware and several real-time operating systems contain already event annotations and let you therefore analyze and understand the operation of these black box software components. Compared to printf debug annotations, the event recorder is faster, includes timestamps and energy information and has less overhead. In this webinar, I will introduce you to the powerful debug windows of MDK that show the event recorder, event statistics and static component views. I will show you how to use the event recorder software component to gain insights into the real-time operating system and demonstrate how to add annotations to user code. I will also explain how to read status information and how to display it in customizable views. The event recorder is a small software component that you add to your application code. It provides a framework and API functions that capture event annotations in the application code. The event recording is stored in an event buffer along with timing and data information while your program is running in real time. When a debugger is connected, the event buffer is continuously read and displayed in debug windows, for example the event recorder window. The event recorder requires no trace and thus can be used even with the smallest Cortex-M0 Plus processor and every debug unit that is supported by MDK. Only memory access via the debug port is necessary. Setting up the event recorder is easy. Just follow these steps. Add the software component, configure it, place it in uninitialized memory, call the initialize function and make sure that your clock settings are correct. But before we go into configuration and setup details, let me show you the tool in action. I have here a demo project that does some mathematical calculations and it is organized in three Artos threads. The first two threads do sine and cosine number crunching, while the third thread calculates prime numbers. I have downloaded the project to my target device and opened the debug session. To get a list of captured events, open with View, Analysis Windows, the Event Recorder. When you run the application, the RTX events are shown in this window. And this lets me verify the correct operation of the RTOS thread execution. Direct links into the documentation provide detailed information about an event and the function that has caused it to happen. I can also get RTOS status information using View, Watch Windows, RTX RTOS. It shows me the information about the RTOS system setup, the current thread status, and this includes, for example, the stack usage. You have now seen how easy it is to display RTOS information. With this, you may optimize, for example, the stack size configuration or the timing of the thread execution. You can also add event recorder functions to your application code. The simplest variants are the start and stop events. Here, event start D generates a start event for the group D with a slot number, in this case 0. Event stop D is the corresponding stop event. The surrounding defines enable the code only when event recorder is part of the application and are not required. Underlined symbols indicate a context link to the documentation. Just press F1 to open it. When you run the modified application, it shows these start and stop events along with the RTX events. 
You can filter events by configuring the target event recording. Due to the large number, I disable for example all RTX events. And after that, you only record and display start and stop events. This setting also reduces the number of events captured and lowers the likelihood of event buffer overruns. When you open View, Analysis Windows, Event Statistics, you can see how often this code section has been executed. It also provides you with minimum, maximum and average execution time. You may have noticed that the start and stop events show source file information, but you may also output value information. To demonstrate that, I have added event start CV and event stop CV to the code. These functions have three parameters. The first is again the slot number. The second and third are used to pass program values. This code generates a start event for group C slot 0 along with a table index value. This index value is shown for example in the event statistic window which allows correlation of execution times to your application code. Now I run this application where I have added multiple start and stop events. The event statistics window now shows multiple groups. This timing profiling is useful when you need to ensure that program execution is within certain timing boundaries. It helps to identify software problems, for example with automated tests. I now connect the power interface of my Ulink Plus to the target and rerun the program. In addition, you can now see the power consumption of the loops. This helps you to identify potential power problems of your code. You may save the event log for later processing. At the command line, enter for example event recorder, statistics and specify a file name. This will create a CSV based file that can be opened in Excel for later comparison with newer log files. The CSV file contains both timing and power information. Let's open our file quickly so that you get an impression about the content. In the prime number calculation thread, I have a shortcut that omits the calculation for every even number which are for sure not prime. I disable this code and go to debug again. Now you can see how the overall program execution slows down and the time required increases. Using an updated log file you could do a comparison with the previous run which would tell you to check your changes more closely. The API also provides functions to create events. This one records an event and allows to pass two values to event recorder. The first parameter is an event ID and the second and third parameters are values to be passed. Using this I will output the value of the currently calculated prime number. Let's go to debug to see how this works. For this event the event recorder window only shows the event number and the parameters in hex format. To format the output I use a software component view description or SCVD file. Let me open mine to review it quickly. This custom SCVD file matches the application code. The event 0A01 is formatted and the value will be shown in decimal. To add this file to the project Open the Options for Target dialog. Go to the Debug tab. Click on Manage Component Viewer Description Files and then on Add Component Viewer Description File and select the file. I re-enter the debug session and check the Event Recorder window. The Prime Number event is shown in the Event Recorder window with the currently calculated Prime Number. I have another SCVD file to create a custom view called My First Viewer. It will display the value of two variables from the cosine thread. I add this SCVD file in the same manner as before.
in the debug session, go to View, Watch Windows, and select My First Viewer. This opens our custom viewer and displays the variables that we are interested in. These two SCVD files are very simple examples. More sophisticated ones are available in the documentation, which you can open using the Manage Runtime Environment window. Several examples are available that explain different aspects of the usage. The complex example demonstrates how to create views for linked lists. The My Component example shows how to utilize the MDK help system for custom software components and how to link to documentation in the event recorder window. All examples run in simulation mode and do not require any hardware. As promised at the beginning, I now show you how to set up the event recorder. To begin with, open the Manage Runtime Environment window, go to Compiler and select the event recorder component. Include the header in your source code by using the context menu item. Initialize the event recorder in main. The Microvision project window shows two more files under the compiler component. Event recorder conf.h is the configuration file. In this file, you can change the settings, such as number of records which you want to put in the event ring buffer. By default, the number of records is set to 64, and each of these records are 16 bytes in size. We need this info to calculate the size of RAM that is required. Let me show you the document that explains this. The formula is 128 plus 36 plus 16 times the number of records. In this case, the total RAM size required is 1188 bytes. To avoid overwriting of event entries during a program reset, you need to place the required RAM area for the event recorder in an uninitialized memory. Open the options for target dialog. Here, I have created a new RAM area which is not initialized that I will use to store the events. I have set the size to 800 hex, which is large enough to store the 1200 bytes. MDK needs to know the core clock value to properly synchronize event recorder data. Go to Debug Settings. On the Trace tab, specify the correct core clock. You do not need to enable trace, as this is not required for event recorder to work. This concludes the setup. Let me summarize the benefits of Event Recorder. Event Recorder helps to understand and analyze the dynamic behavior of software components with little memory overhead. With the new Event Statistics feature, you can profile the timing of the code execution and even do power profiling when using Ulink Plus. Adding RTOS awareness to a development tool does not require complex DLL programming. Only small changes in the source code are required. As the function calls are non-blocking, there is no need for separate debug and release versions of your application. Event annotations can stay in production code. Event Recorder still works in higher optimization levels of the compiler. It is available with any debug unit in the market, even cheap onboard adapters that are often part of inexpensive development boards. Event Recorder saves the data in the local memory to ensure fast recording of events without specific trace requirements. Logging functionality lets you analyze code revisions and dig into problems that come up during the development of your code. Download MDK today. Our event recorder examples work in simulation even with the free MDK Lite edition. Learn how to annotate your own code or use the built-in annotations with MDK middleware, RTX or FreeRTOS. Thanks for attending this webinar.